Do you ever wish you could have a life do-over, similar to a makeover or a house renovation? A chance to try something again with a different result? Try Again with Monique is a place where I will give you my take and also hear from you regarding the questions and challenges we all face in life. You will either be inspired to try life again, over and over again, or make some really good lemonade from those sour lemons. Either way, I got you. If at first you don't succeed, try again with Monique. Today I am speaking with Jacob Mays, an entrepreneur who currently lives in Florida, but is originally from my hometown of Buffalo, New York. I'm excited to hear what he has to say because I know that we will all benefit from hearing his story. Welcome, Jacob, to the podcast, and thank you for agreeing to talk to me today. How are you? I'm well. Thank you for having me, Monique. I appreciate it. Good, good. Thank you. Thank you for coming on the podcast. My intention, uh, Jacob, for the Try Again with Monique podcast is really to encourage people to think about their lives a little differently and to, you know, recalibrate if necessary, especially sure. if they don't like how things turned out you know, out the first time around. Right. Um, today's topic, as you know, is personal success. And I want to know from you how you define it, how you've navigated various transitions in your own life. And the first thing I want you to share with us is a moment in your life or your career in which you, you know, had to recreate yourself or you had to try, you know, when you tried something new, you tried something different. Talk to us about that transition and tell us how it came about. Oh, that's a good question. So, you know, when you ask the question, there was a, a situation that arises in my mind um, that occurred at work back in probably maybe 2008. Okay. And uh, I had been working at Office Depot since about 2003. And um, no, I was actually a little later than that. I would say about 2000. And, yeah, about 2000. Yeah, maybe it was 2008. So I was working at Office Depot mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, I'd been d doing a lot of things there. I had made some significant contributions and uh, I was trying to get a, a particular promotion to a, I think it was a directorship. Okay. And uh, my immediate supervisor, uh, well, actually, I set up a meeting with the VP of marketing. Uh-huh. And my immediate supervisor was there as well, too. And we were in the meeting and the, the supervisor had made a statement that uh, I was unproven. Unproven. He told that to the VP. Now, let me back up for a second. He said you were unproven. I was unproven. Okay. So let me let me just back up. One of the things, so, so I was in marketing research, right? Okay. Um, and I had developed this brand tracker, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it was me and another guy, me and my boss at the time. He had started it, but then I had finished it. And I had actually developed this brand tracker, which monitored the brand health of the entire organization. Okay. So it looked at purchase behavior, like what products people were purchasing, what they thought of the products what they were purchasing from other competitors like Staples and Office Max. This is before Office Depot actually combined with Office Max. Okay. And I was monitoring this on a monthly basis. And we were collecting like about a thousand interviews per month. And all of the major departments at Office Depot were using this brand health instrument that I had, you know, developed to make major decisions in their business. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, for him to say that I was unproven was it was an insult. Wow. And I knew right then and there um, that I would have no future in corporate America if I left my destiny in the hands of other people. Got it. So at that point, I decided to um, venture out on my own and start something on the side. All right. While I was still working at Office Depot. Okay. That would eventually lead to me leaving and just doing my own thing and never returning to corporate America. And that's when I started uh, SPSS Video Tutor. Um, SPS Video yeah, S Tutor. SPSS Video Tutor. So Got SPSS it. is a statistical software package. Okay. Right, that is used primarily in academia 
in the health uh, and social sciences. It's also used in, in the uh, business sciences as well, but more so social sciences um, and health sciences. And what people do when they go to graduate school is they have to learn this tool in, st in their statistics class, but it's, it's sort of difficult because you're trying to learn statistics and this software tool at the same time. Okay. So what I did is I put up some video tutorials and um, eventually I had universities license my video tutorials to use with their students. Wow. Yeah. So that is great. Mm -hmm. So you left, you know, when you made that decision you, you, to leave Office Depot uh, and, and start your own business, you never returned to a, a, a you know, nine to five type job. No. You, you're still an entrepreneur. You're still running yeah. that business. Yeah. Yeah. So what happened was, is in 2012, so I started the business in 2008, but I had learned my lesson because back in 2001, I had quit my job in Detroit and moved to Atlanta to start a business. And that was a fiasco. And what I realized is that you never want to start a business until the business and quit your job until the business can replace your income. Got it. Including your insurance. Right? Okay. Um, so this is my second go round. And I was like, okay, this time I'm going to grow the business in parallel to me working for corporate America. And then in 2012, when I got laid off, the business had grown substantially and I was already prepared to just move right into full-time entrepreneurship. So it wasn't a, a big deal. Okay. So my next question was going to be what did you learn from that experience? But one of the biggies that you just shared, I, I think that is can be really helpful for anyone trying to launch out on their own, uh, you know, in the area of entrepreneurship is, you know, don't quit that day job until, mm -mm. as you said, mm -mm. you know, mm -mm. that business, work that business while you're getting your regular income and while you can yes. go to the doctor and get those kinds of things, those insurance things that insurance pay for, get those That's things right. taken care of until it can, you know, replace, you know, that income that the day job uh, brings you and cover, as you said, insurance. I think that is really important for people to know because I think people have ideas and they just sort of sometimes run with that and think that you know things are going to happen overnight but mm -mm. As, as you well can probably tell us Jacob that you know entrepreneurship is a, is a process being successful in that area is is a process you may have a great idea that may work and eventually be profitable for you but you know it's not going to happen overnight I think that's really really solid advice to give to people is there anything else Jacob that you would share with our listeners that you you learned from that experience, making that transition from the, you know, the, the, the day job, corporate America to, you know, full time entrepreneurship. Well, another thing that I would suggest, too, is that you have to have the same level of discipline that you had at corporate in your entrepreneurial job or okay. in your, on your entrepreneurial venture. OK, so, for example, when I got laid off, um, when I was working at Office Depot, um, you know, it, that was a nine to six job, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you got up every morning, you got dressed and you got yourself together, got on the road, went to work, did your job, had lunch, came back, work. So after I got laid off, what I did, I, I never stopped that. So although I only needed a laptop and Internet, Mm -hmm. I would get up every morning and go to Starbucks. So Starbucks became my new destination. Okay. Um, so I would get up in the morning, get dressed, same work clothes, and then go do what I needed to do at Starbucks and then come home in the, in the evening around five or six. Interesting. Because it's important that you maintain that discipline because it's easy to fall into this, to a rut where you're just getting up in the morning and you go to your office and you work and then you lally gag and then you get on the internet and you know no you have to take this seriously like a job right um, if you want it to be profitable exactly if yeah. you want it to be yeah. profitable if you want it to be successful you have to demonstrate the same level of discipline that you did with your job because you know this is your new lifeline this right. new venture is going to support you 
right? right? It, has, you, it has to work in exactly, that case. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. And you just, you can't be slack on it. You can't be slack on it at all. I think that's great. I think that's great. Um, Jacob, I'm just curious, how long d- did it take you, um, you know, to go from, you know, you were working corporate America and working your business, and then eventually you were able to do your business full time. How long did it take before you really were able to replace that income and and do that entrepreneurial endeavor full time? Yeah, that's a great question. So when I first started, uh, you know, it's funny, too, because I look at the spreadsheet sometimes. So the first year, I think I make I made about six grand. And and then the next year I made about 18. And then the next year I made about 24 and I was on my job. I was making over six figures. So in order for me to get to a point where um, I felt comfortable, Mm -hmm. uh, once I got laid off, I was at a comfortable point. I wasn't at six figures by that time on my entrepreneurial uh, uh, job or my entrepreneurial venture, Mm -hmm. but I was close. Right. I was I was still making enough such that I could pay for insurance. I could pay my house note, pay all my bills and pay myself. Okay. And then what I did is I uh, went to the West Coast, took some marketing, online marketing courses to sort of beef up my skills, because now all of my stuff is on the Internet. So now I needed to focus on improving my Internet marketing skills. Okay. And then once I did that, you know, once I got that extra training that would improve, you know, the the marketing and viability of my business, then I was able to maintain that level uh, and even grow it to the point where it's, you know, it's comfortable and it's it's pretty stable. And it has been pretty stable since about 2000, 2012, 2013. That is awesome. You said pay yourself. Uh, I, I'm just, I'm curious. Uh, is that just because you believe in saving or was that because you wanted to make sure there was sort of a nest egg in case the, you know, it didn't work out? No. So, you know, so it all depends on how you structure your business, right? So I was able to um, find an accountant. And as soon as I got my first licensing agreement mm-hmm. or just before I got my first licensing agreement, he set up my business as an LLC. Okay. Right. Um, so my taxes while I was working at Office Depot, my taxes were being paid um, through my earnings at Office Depot. But okay. then when I got laid off, then all of my taxes had to be paid through the corporation. Right. Got it. So... Um, once I started doing that, then I started taking a a salary, right? Um, just so that I could have money for myself, because this is another critical thing. You do not mix your business expenses and your business purchases with your personal purchases and expenses. You do not mix them at all. No. Okay. So I have uh, a bank account for my business and I have a bank account for my personal. Got it. And I have cards for my business and I have cards for my personal and I do not mix and match. Oh, you even separate the cards. That's good. Yeah, you have to. You have to because you have a business card and you have a personal card. So anything that's related to business, business travel, everything goes on that card because those are business expenses that are taxed differently. And then you do things for personal and those things are done, you know, for your own leisure and things like that. So all of that has to remain separate. I think that is a great, great tip for people uh, who might not think about that, uh, you know, as they're trying to start a a new business. Mm -hmm. Jacob, Mm -hmm. tell me, how do you define success? What is your definition of success? For me, um, it's really about autonomy. Okay. Um, It's about the ability to determine what you do, when you do it, and how you do it. The ability to have that control Mm. to determine what you do, when you do it, and how you do it. Okay. Okay. 
so that's in terms of business um that so that what i say when i talk about autonomy but it's also related to health mm -hmm. uh you know you can't you can't push that aside uh, you can't ignore your health you okay. can't ignore your friendships you know i think that a person who's successful is not only successful in business but also they're healthy um they have healthy relationships with the people around them um yes. healthy relationships yes. with their family i agree with that um you yes. know they have some kind of spiritual balance in their life so it's not just business it's more of a holistic uh, perspective of success okay that's great that's great do you jacob consider yourself successful based on that definition why or why not um partially okay partially um you know there are some things that i still want to achieve like you know as it relates to family and things like that because i'm not married i don't have any kids okay um so i don't so i don't consider myself 100 percent successful in that in those terms okay um, I think that I'm more successful in some areas than I am in others. Um, but success, I think, is a is a journey. Um, yes, I agree. Not necessarily a destination. That's um, good. A journey so, and not a destination. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, because, you know, you can be successful today and not be successful you know, or be less successful tomorrow, depending on, you know, circumstances. So it's a something that's continuously in flux. So it's just something that you always have to maintain and, and to pursue. You know? I, I think that's great. Something you maintain and, and you're always in pursuit of. I think that's yeah. great. Yeah. 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 I think it's, 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 it's similar because uh, people, you know, life is complex. People are complex. Yeah. Um, and, and I, I, I always say that, you know, uh, as sure as you're successful in one area of your life, you're probably struggling yeah. sometimes simultaneously yeah. in another area because yeah. that is really sort of how life works. Um, so right. I love that you gave that definition that it's really a journey and, and not a destination. Um, I, I think it it's easier for people to, you know, I, I was interviewing someone else who said, celebrate the small wins. You know, another yeah. entrepreneur who was saying, celebrate the small wins because, you know, sometimes things are going to go really well in that journey while you're pursuing entrepreneurship. And sometimes you're going to fall flat on your face. And yeah. so you just celebrate celebrate the small wins along the way um, and, and treat it, as you said, as a journey. I really, really like that definition. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, everyone has their own definition, but that's just the way I look at it, you know? Yeah. I think that's a, a, a balanced way to look yeah, at it. Yeah. Well, Very... I mean, you, you, you have to be honest with yourself. You know, you can't just say, oh, I'm successful and then ignore other parts of your life that maybe you aren't doing too well. So, I mean, it's just a matter of being transparent with yourself, you know? Awesome. Awesome. Jacob, how can people get in touch with you if they want to know more about your business or if they want to even use your services? How can they connect with you? Uh, yeah, so they can go to uh, SPSSVideoTutor.com. Okay. That's my website. Or they can contact me via email at Jacob, J-A-C-O-B, at S. P S S Sam Paul Sam Sam okay. video tutor dot com. Awesome, awesome. I'm gonna just ask you one more time, and then I kind of got two more questions, and we're we're wrapping it up. Yeah, yeah, bit. absolutely. Thank you so much for your time. Um, is there anything else? I, I just want to give you a, an opportunity. If, if there's anything else that you, you've said a lot today, is there anything else for, I'm thinking of that person who, you know, uh, wants to try something new uh, with their, their life or with their career. They want to maybe switch careers. Maybe they want to start their own business um, and leave, you know, corporate America or, or a nine to five job as you did successfully, but they really don't, think they have what it takes to make that kind of change you you've said a lot um and i'm just gonna i took i took notes and i'm just gonna kind of uh, say some of the things that 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 i wrote down you said and if there's anything else you want to add uh please do and if not we can just leave it at that but you you said don't you know you advise people to not quit their their day job if they have a mm -hmm. day job don't quit that job mm -hmm. until you know um you know your your next endeavor uh can replace that income that your day job provided and can cover you know that that 
that health insurance, that insurance, yes, so insurance is, I should say. You mm-hmm. talked about the discipline, especially when you're, you're trying something new and entrepreneurially. You know, you, you really want to be disciplined. You talked about getting up and, and, and going to work, really. You went to mm-hmm. Starbucks, I think you said, and, mm-hmm. and, and treated it like, you know, you, you, handle yourself when you work, you know, for corporate America, you got up, you got dressed, you went to a a physical location and you did the same thing when you were on the road to, you know, pursuing that, that entrepreneurship, um, that discipline is important. Don't, don't slack off. Um, and, and, and there's a process, you know, that, you know, you're not going to make mega bucks or even what you made before right away no. you know um you have to sort of be patient with the process and be willing to go through the process um and you know uh and you then talked about not mixing um business expenses with personal expenses make sure you you've got that right i think you mentioned that you had um hired an accountant to make sure that all of that was you know uh, mm-hmm. legit and, and the way it should be to separate those business expenses from those uh your your personal expenses i i think those those are really key and important things for people to know, uh, especially if they want to become an entrepreneur. Is there anything else you would say to that person who really wants to launch out and try something different? Right. Um, so a couple of things. Um, when I started my business while I was working in corporate, what I would do is after I came home from work, mm-hmm. got home about 6.30, I'd come in, eat dinner, and then I would start working on my quote unquote entrepreneurial venture. And I would go from about eight to about 10, 1030. And I did that every night. So that was sort of a pattern that I established because you have to, you have to figure out how you're going to build your entrepreneurial venture or your quote unquote side hustle. Okay. Um, while you're working right sure sure um because y- you can't do it while you're working at the job i wouldn't suggest that because you can't I've do it during the working hours fired. Yeah, right yeah. right absolutely because i've known people who tried to bring their a separate laptop to work and work on their business and they wound up getting caught and they wound up getting fired sure um okay so you just have to be disciplined i would say either do it on the weekdays and then relax on the weekends or relax uh, during the week and then set aside time on the weekends to do it. Um, but I wouldn't work Monday through Sunday. I, I just wouldn't do it because you, it's been my experience that you get burned out. Burnout, sure. Um, so that's one thing. Okay. So, uh, and then another thing is once you start a business, you need to register it with your respective state. Okay. Um, so you need to get a, a business license with your state. And uh, I think that's usually done. Oh, I can't remember what it is. Uh, but yeah, but you need to look into that and get your business license with the state. Excellent. That, thank you for those those helpful tips, because I think people think if they have an idea and they have passion, that that's all they need to no, start a business. But be clearly, legitimate. as you it's got to be legitimate. Exactly. Clearly, as you're telling us, there's a lot more to it than just your great idea and your passion. Um, you know, there's discipline involved. There's there's business etiquette involved. There's, uh, you know, things you need to know. Um, yeah. Thank you so much, Jacob, for sharing all that for those that might want to do what you're doing mm-hmm. or, or head in that direction. My last question for you, Jacob, is a light one. And that is, what is something that you like or dislike that most people wouldn't know about? you something you like or dislike that most people wouldn't know about you that you're of course willing to share publicly (laughs) something i like or dislike that people wouldn't know about me that's a good question um something i like or dislike uh that's a great question that no Uh, but it's that most people wouldn't know that you like or dislike (laughs) yeah most people wouldn't know um huh uh, I know that's a tough one, isn't it? You have to really yeah, think. Yeah, because I mean, <laughs> I, I'm pretty transparent with the people that know me. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, I you They're, know, I'm gonna tell you. Uh, okay. I really enjoy, um, and I know this is not some kind of public secret or anything, but okay. <laughs> um, I just like going for long walks. I really okay. do. 
Okay. I really like going for long walks and uh, and just getting out there for about an hour, an hour and a half, and just going for nice long walks. I mean, I know that sort of may so sound sort of uh, cheesy, but uh, no, yeah, not I, at I all. I like going for long walks. I okay. really do. <laughs> do you like going for long walks alone, or do you like company? No, I like it. I like alone. Okay. I like going alone. So you like your time alone? Yeah, yeah. Because it just gives me time walks. to think, reflect. That's okay. when I have my sort of alone time. You know. That's great. Um, well, you live yeah. in Florida, so I would imagine that there's ample opportunity throughout the almost the entire year, right? To yeah, do that. yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Great climate I live for in that. South Florida too, because uh, okay, and the temperature in January doesn't get below typically doesn't get below sixty five. Oh, wow. um, yeah. Now you know and, where I am. I'm in Buffalo, <laughs> so we don't know anything about that in the month of January. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. I bet you won't head back this way anytime soon. <laughs> no. Well, not in the winter, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, that's true. Not, we have great summers. We have great summers. Yeah, that's have... true. Just stay Very away Very mild, in the and, you know, relatively mild. Um, yeah, yeah, that's true. Because it doesn't really get into into the 90s that much. It's more like 85, right? Does it still do, do that? In the summer here? Oh, yeah, yeah. We, we have very nice summers, and we do. We can get into the 80s and even the 90s sometimes, especially when you go into July and August. Oh, okay. But you're right. You're absolutely right. Just stay away in the winter. I know yeah. that was not a good plug for Buffalo, New York, but it's the truth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jacob, thank you so much. A lot of people, well, probably no one knows or very few know that um, I have, I feel like I've known you forever, but you and I have known each other a very long time uh, since grammar school. <laughs> and yeah. here we are adults and we have so many memories uh, going yeah. back to grammar school. But I'm, 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 thank you so much for taking the time to, to talk to us today and giving us really those helpful tips, Jacob. Uh, I'm so proud of you and what you're doing and your longevity in this area of entrepreneurship and how you have just successfully done that uh, and maintained that for yourself. Thank you, Jacob, for your time today, sure. for giving us so many helpful takeaways while sharing your views on personal success. Thank you for taking the time to listen to Try Again with Monique. If you enjoyed today's episode, please take a moment to leave a review wherever you are listening. Please also remember to hit the subscribe button so you can be notified when new episodes are available. New episodes will be posted weekly. Please also like and follow us on Facebook. Try Again with Monique is a production of GM Associates released under Creative Common Attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives, 4.0 international license. Remember, if at first you don't succeed, try again with Monique.